I think I've always seen electronic music no different than the, aer the aerosol can, the potential. With, with graf graffiti in the day, you know, I saw an interview the other day, I was 17, I was on a TV programme um, based in Birmingham and it was the cameraman f you know, launched the a microphone for the very first time in my hand. He goes, well, what do you want to do? I went, well, look, I want to change things like, I want to I I I just be seen and I want to I want to just change it with graffiti and, and I've got a voice. and. I just want to do something that's different, basically. <laughs> and I guess that still resonates with me now, really. And, um, you know, art, art and music are one of the same, and I think one of them has been compromised slightly. I feel that, you know, some, to some degree, I think, you know, art in its purest form is, 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 is still one of the things that you can't download. You know, you go to a gallery, you have this third party kind of issue going on, whereas you, the painting, and the space that you're in, if, if you're alone, you can, you know, it does something to you that's completely different. And, and you know, I, I get pictures all the time on social media, and I look at something, and I go, yeah, cool. And I, I look at it in real life, and the perspective completely changes. I think music, to a certain degree, especially electronic music, it still remains sleight of hand magic. Do you know what I mean? It's up to the the, the, the producer, in fact, whoever's going to be doing that music, to to give you this great illusion of sound coming, still coming out of two speakers. And, uh, and that's where the value of arrangement comes in. So, you know, I'm constantly, you know, what are you up to today? It's not today, it's kind of in the moment for me. All of the time, constantly still challenging myself with what art is and my belief of art. You know, whether it's the Lost Tribes collection, which I think I'm doing in, in, in September, which probably is my greatest work I've ever done artistically, I feel. And then, you know, you look at something like at The Alchemist, well, is it the end of an era or is it the beginning of a new thing? Well, I think it's kind of rebirth, isn't it? And I think for me, hearing that non-voice with drum and bass music, that, you know, that it was sound, which was, it, which was the emotion of what the country was feeling. And I felt there was a, an area of that that was, that yes, we were self-medicating ourselves to so forget about that, no different than the 40s and prohibition. But then there was also this, this champion of that, trying to champion that to say, yeah, hang on a second. Yeah, we're actually, we belong here and, and we're going to change that and we're going to change what your perception is of this music. And that's, that's still a very important thing for me. I think The Alchemist is by, by, by no means, you know, a definitive kind of look at me in, in you know, an actual real detailed look. But for my, that's what my, my photographs of time are. They're my fa favourite pieces which all hold a very emotional place in my heart. Not really in my head, because when you're young, you don't really get time to think, you're just doing these things because you feel it. And that's always been a really big thing for me. I've never gone into a studio and gone, we've got to do this format, because this tune works in this format, and that's what's gonna sell more records. That's never been an issue. It's always come from the, the part of the artist, and, and um, you know, somebody at Warner's let me know the other day, well, you do realize you sold 2.6 million albums. But at that time, in for underground music doing that was quite a big deal. And I'm like, oh, I don't fucking know, I just wanna, I just wanna make more music. And, um, you know, I think from walking into Pete Tong's office with a pit bull wasn't a really good idea. He saw on the album, but I used to put, make my dog sit on the chair next to me while he's sitting there negotiating whether or not he's gonna sign his album. There's still some great things that I believe in my career have not been done. And, you know, Sine Temple is three years in, in the working with the whole back, you know, the structure of, you know, getting an orchestra to know, you know, notating. And, uh, you know, my idea of doing that is to fully orchestrate, you know, with like 80 piece choir, 80 piece orchestra, you know, wood percussion, metal percussion, electronic percussion, and being able to do that thoroughly as opposed to just having a kid with a laptop and you have the string section playing. Gary Glitter's string arrangement sounds great. You can make any, any song in the world sound great if you've got the entire string section playing it. It could be, you know, it could be, you know, it could be, uh, and Elmo's Fire or Freddy Krueger's music back at, you know, it's, it doesn't really matter. And I think if you fully orchestrate, I think in that respect, Timeless is a fantastic blueprint to be able to do that. Because um, it crossed so many genres. It's almost as if it wasn't drum and bass because that was purely just the vehicle at the time to be able to drive the machine. Um, and I think that the soul of the music and the ghost in the machine, i.e. not being an engineer, allowed me to be able to do that wholeheartedly without succumbing to 
the normal kind of formatted situation. The character Goldie's something else, you know what I mean? That's the guy who wears shiny shirts and dances around on TV, so your mum can see. Um, um, you know, get stopped in Waitrose on a Sunday for, for doing classical music. Um, but that's kind of my kind of little kind of secret giggle to myself. It's a little bit like, well, why do you do these things? Well, because I can. And it's been great.